Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are here today with Maria at, in a continuation of the North Node conversations that I've done a couple Aries North Node conversations that are already live on the channel. Today, though, is my first getting to break away from the Aries North Node and step into Scorpio North Node. And so we're joined by Maria to share just a little bit of her experience with that. Hopefully already we're seeing that experience may vary, okay? Your whole chart makes a huge difference. And so we'll give as much context as we can to help shape some of her story so you can, can kind of compare yours. Um, but before we dive into that, we're going to start with, uh, we are recording this on October 5th, 2023. We are right in the middle of the Virgo new moon cycle that happened like two and a half weeks ago. And the Aries full moon that's just super fresh, like happened within the last week. So that's kind of setting the stage for where we are right now. And I would love to ask Maria, how are you doing in today's energetic climate? How's it going for you? It's a bit intense for me. Like, I'll just throw that out there up front. So yeah, let's start there. Yes, it's been intense. I feel, <laughs> oh my gosh, from the new moon. At that point, I just went into this like deep exhaustion where my energy was super low. I had a hard time concentrating and focusing on anything. My eyes were sticky and gummy all the time. I feel like this week I've been coming out of that, but the exhaustion's still there. My body's been achy. It's been intense. Mm -hmm. Just physically, it's been intense. Mm -hmm. Internally, it's been intense. There's been a lot of kind of self-reflections and a lot of old memories coming back from like teenage years and just little things that seem so small and trivial, these memories are coming in. So it's been, it's been interesting and tiring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of the above. Like I'm, yeah. I'm experiencing the same thing. So I wonder if, you know, like it's more of a collective experience of this energy. Um, I'm sure there's a variety of experiences going out there always is, but yeah, I could definitely see where, the energy itself is wanting to dissociate us, which like that, that extreme exhaustion, like, and not being able to concentrate. I feel that so pointedly, my mind is not under my control. And I'm like, what do I do with this? <laughs> Except there's like a grander energy happening here. I think we're like, yes, please dissociate from your old ways, your old patterns, and like in doing that, you're kind of like free, full, free floating, a free agent on like whatever new thing is coming. So I think like, yes. you know, in between the Virgo new moon of clearing out maybe what's, what isn't super great for us. There's a lot of Uranus involvement in there too, of like making the changes we haven't been able to make for ourselves. And that's like a, yeah. a theme I'm seeing too, but moving into this Libra new moon with like, where do we want to go from here? You know? Yeah. What commitments do you want to keep? What do you need to rework? Those little trivial things that are coming up, they are trivial. I'm seeing in my own self and there's a mountain of them that I've there's hit mountains. on. Yes. <laughs> and now, not so trivial in the way that yes. it's accumulated on me. So yeah, yes. that's just a little bit of reflection that like, I'm feeling very much into what you're describing. And I wonder if anybody else is validated by that experience that like, it's okay. It's okay. Yes. I think it's still part yeah. of, it's still working. You know, it's happening. Yes. <laughs> Just might feel a little <laughs> sometimes. Um, thank you for sharing that and being willing yeah. to let us have <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you for letting me know I'm not alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and hopefully yeah. other people too that are like, wow, yeah. that's what I was feeling so yeah maybe yeah it could happen maybe <laughs> um, whatever your experience is I would love to hear you know these are wild energies that we're in just in general there's a, a bunch of things that we could point to to say it would be intense if only that thing was happening and there's a bunch of them so like yeah intensity I, I, on steroids <laughs> I, know. I, know. I love intensity even and it's intense for me so yes I can't even imagine the ones that are more like calm Kathy's like, dude, like how you doing out there? Because 
it could be a little bit touch and go, I might imagine. Yeah. So anyways, um, North node conversations and Scorpio North node. So I kind of like stole your thunder there as far as what's your North node, but you could tell us what, <laughs> what house is it in? What house is your North node in? Yes. My North nose is in my fifth house. Yes. Fifth house, South node in 11th house. And so I have found my entire life. I've been struggling with friendships and yeah, just very, very um, tumultuous. And I haven't been able to build a friendship that doesn't end in some type of betrayal or bullying or abandonment. And mm -hmm. it's been that repeatedly. And I feel like with my North node in the fifth house, it's like trying to teach me the psychology around friendships, around human behavior, and around still being able to be in your joy and your creativity and be healthy within self. Yeah. It's been it's been a horrible, intense ride. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. No, You're do not recommend. <laughs> okay, well, good. <laughs> There's no refunds. There's no no <laughs> returns, no exchanges. So, so how, okay. So let's, let's add in just a little bit more context. Like what are your big three, like your sun, your moon, and your rising? Right. Okay. My sun and my moon are conjunct in Taurus. So sun is actually in the 10th house and the moon is in the 11th house, so okay. two degrees apart. <laughs> and there's just, yeah, it's so weird. So, so how far apart then are your moon and your south node? Um, so that would be 12 degrees. So one degrees apart. So like your south node and your moon are like right oh, together? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. So that would mean that you were born like right around the time of a new moon solar eclipse. Yeah. yeah. And with the south node so like also that would be the kind of chart then where it's like okay if your sun and your moon are both with your south node like you're one of the ones where especially you're not meant to just like tendencies to leave behind like you know get rid of all that Taurus stuff like you still have a lot of energy like pulling you towards the 11th house and the well 10th and 11th and the Yes. the Taurus archetypes. What else do yes. you have on, or sorry, your rising sign? Didn't let you get to that. My rising sign is Cancer oh. and it's conjunct Mars and Saturn. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that feels, that feels messy right on it's the, messy. Yeah, like right in front of your face kind of thing. Like yeah. you, there's yeah. no getting around it. You yeah. were like, okay, <laughs> I, I feel like that's <laughs> an underlying energy signature of like maybe someone who procrastinated on their lessons in previous lifetimes. And you're like, I know maybe. what I'll do. I know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll put it like this. And then I won't be able to procrastinate. This is a genius <laughs> idea. And then you got here and you're like, what have I done? Yes, what? I think you're right. <laughs> like... <laughs> never what we think it's going to be that's how the 3d school works but anyway um okay so wow yeah cancer rising it's been awful that makes a little bit more sense too okay yes. um, yeah okay so then what else do you have on the scorpio end if anything so the i've got my my uranus at four degrees oh my my north node is at 12 degrees so the yeah. uranus is close yeah oh. conjunct that as well so and the uranus is exact um not a, yeah it's opposition to the moon and the sun yeah yeah north node uranus opposed to the sun and the moon and my jupiter is also right beside my sun oh wow also in taurus yes in the 10th house oh wow Yes. <laughs> That's intense. Yeah. 
on an axis that is like known for its intensity that's an intense chunk on both ends and like the ripping apart that so like heavy opposition on one side with like one planet that's bad enough but like heavy on both ends yeah again it feels very intentional as far as like you meant it when you said this is the time I'm gonna freaking figure this out <laughs> you're like there's yes. no getting around it <laughs> no none at all so <laughs> I I appreciate and admire your ambition in this <laughs> in this life path that you signed up for congratulations <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a lot to stack on your plate but yeah like it feels like next level inner empowerment as yes. far as like the juicy stuff that's possible when you are fully in your power and then yes. you merge with another one who's fully in their power yes. the synergy like the synergy is in that fifth house of creation like what do you want to make out of it yeah you know, yeah. like life's about yeah. to be real good. Once you yes. really get that into high gear. Um, I wonder like what else, what else comes up as far as like whatever you've studied about Scorpio North Node or the Taurus South Node or kind of whichever end you want to go to and how you see that playing out in your life. Okay. So I've been struggling to really see my south node like I've like I've I've so the start of my life I was born into um a very tumultuous family we were poor my father came from a very physically abusive child upbringing so he he wasn't physically abusive to myself my sister my my brother um but he was verbally abusive and he was always angry so there was a lot of rage in the house um we lived out in the country we were isolated from most people so the only people I saw growing up was the kids at school and then I came home the bus ride was an hour so it was like far away from everybody I wasn't allowed to talk on the phone it's, it's, so it was a very isolated upbringing we grew all our own food, vegetables, meat. So that I feel like is my Taurus South node is that living off the land and that self-sufficiency of the home. So I feel like that was definitely part of my South node. And then I have carried that forward throughout my life. I got married early. I was married at 23. We actually had our first child when I was 21 and then we had our second child a year after the wedding, a little over a year after the wedding. And we immediately built a home together and I kind of brought forward what I learned as a child. And I had like a big vegetable garden that I would care for. I would try to like, it was in town. So it wasn't as big as, you know, what I needed to be self-sufficient but I would use whatever I got it I would make my own relishes and pickles and tomato sauces and you know freeze what I could for like carrots and peas and stuff like that so I was still doing those things that I think is my my Taurus South node and but all the while as I was bringing those elements in that Scorpio North node was just creating a lot of turmoil so there was never peace in any of the situations, either at home and then in my marriage. It was very tumultuous. There was always like emotional turmoil going on, which is the North Node trying to get me to understand the depths of the human emotion system and the depths of psychology. And so understanding my father and you know, it was like, I, we always had to walk on eggshells because we never knew what was going to trigger his rage. And so that helped me to understand that kind of person and how to identify emotions and how to protect myself from very tumultuous energies. Mm -hmm. And then in my marriage, um, my husband, ex-husband now, um, was very controlling 
as a way of protecting his own his own emotions. So he grew up in a family. He didn't have a father figure. He was raised by his mother and grandmother. And his mother was super controlling, like the most controlling person I've ever witnessed in my lifetime. And so he grew up under that like authoritarian control system. And so Mm -hmm. then as an adult, he had to control just to keep his own emotional core protected. Mm -hmm. And so I was dealing with, you know, understanding those elements of his psychology and the emotions and trying to pacify and trying to like, just keep the waters calm. Yeah. So I think that's the North node coming in to just help me understand those deeper elements of human nature and the human shadow. And I find that present day, what I've come to with all the different things. So I've gone through bullying all through my entire life. So um, it started with my father. He was the, the very first bully. And then when I started school in kindergarten, my teacher took on that role. She became the bully and I had her for kindergarten and grade one. So two years I dealt with this really oppressive woman who I don't even understand why she would have had such a strong urge to manipulate and control a child, but she did. And she isolated me from the rest of the group. So it was like kind of a repeat. So my My home was isolated from everybody. And then when I got to school, my very first teacher separated me from the rest of the students in the class. She pulled my desk to sit right beside her desk where the other desks were grouped together in like sets of four and all the kids got to communicate together. But I was isolated at her desk. And I don't understand why, because I was always really quiet. I was a good child because if I was ever bad, bad things would happen. So I was like Mm. good to a fault. And so there wasn't any reason why that I can see why she would have done that. And then she would isolate or like she would pick me out with certain things and humiliate me in front of the entire class. Um, For example, in kindergarten, the first experience I remember that was just mortifying. We were sitting down on the carpet at the front of the room and she was telling a story. She was reading from a book and we were in a circle around her. And I remember I had a little plastic ring on my finger that I had got as a a treat from a birthday party. When they give out the goodie bags, it was in that bag. And I just loved it because I was a poor kid and didn't have a lot of things. So when I went to this birthday party and got this, this was like treasure. This was like so magnificent. So I'm listening to the story and I'm looking down at my hand at the ring. And all of a sudden I hear her say very sternly give it to me and I all the students kind of looked up and she was looking directly at me with her hand extended give it to me and I was confused she's like the ring give it to me so I took off the ring gave it to her and then she humiliated me in front of the whole circle telling me that I should be paying attention to the story and I can't even remember what everything she said but she went on and on about how I wasn't paying attention and So she took the ring anyway, she put it in her desk, locked it in the top drawer of her desk. She kept it there for the next two years. And she would, when my desk was sitting beside hers, she would pull it out. She would put it on her baby finger. She would turn her hand and catch the light and look at it, admiring it. And then she'd take it back off, put it back in the drawer and lock the drawer in front of my face. She would do this to, to, manipulate me when I was a kid and That's it was just like so she would do like different things there was a time where um all the kids came in from recess it was winter so we had winter boots and coats and mitts and leggings and all this stuff so we'd come in the very first thing we do the hallway outside of the classroom each of us had to line up our boots along the hallway and I was one of the I think I was the fourth child in so my boots were it was There was probably like 30 kids in the class. I was one of the first ones in. I set my boots, put my coat back in the closet, came back to sit on the the mat. That was the the thing. You go in, put your stuff away, and you come and sit on the front mat. So I'm sitting quietly waiting for the rest of the kids. And 
and then almost everyone had sat down already and she brings one of my boots I had red boots I was the only kid with red winter boots she she has a boot in her hand she comes into the classroom she's holding it up and she's like whose boot is this and I put up my hand and then she just reamed me out in front of the class because I guess my boots got knocked over probably as the other kids were rushing they just knocked my boot over and she totally humiliated him in front of me in front of the class because I didn't neatly put my boots away and she made me go back and clean the back closet people's snow pants and mitts and bags were like kind of on the floor I had to clean up the whole closet while the rest of the class got to watch a movie and it was just these types of things that just kept happening and after that so those first two years I then attract a bully in every single class it was usually a student, sometimes it was a teacher. And it just like, it was a pattern that now I had, you know, allowed that energy to kind of imprint me. And that was what I kept attracting. And I did that all the way through elementary school, all the way through high school, and then into my working life. There was always a bully. Mm -hmm. And where was I going with this? But it was just the whole thing that whole experience year after year from the time I was little until present day, I'm dealing with a group of women currently right now who are gossiping and bullying and have abandoned me. And it's just like, it doesn't end. And it's this whole lesson of self-empowerment, being in a place where I know how to set boundaries. That is a big lesson that I've been learning over this past year and a half I'm really getting into the importance of setting boundaries and using discernment and being protect self-protective, which yeah. I didn't even know how to do because early in childhood, it was like, I had no autonomy over myself. It was like, whatever I needed to do to make my father at peace and happy was what, you know, was done. It wasn't, there was never a, a time where I could express my true self and be who I really am. Yeah. So I never learned that. And so it's been a long life of trying to learn that. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to <laughs> kick somebody's ass, like for real. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a couple things that I want to say that kind of loop back around to, I feel like you very intentionally bit off a lot in this lifetime, yeah. because if your Jupiter wasn't in Taurus, if your Uranus wasn't in Scorpio, like if those had, if you had come in one of the other Scorpio North node groups, like those planets wouldn't have been on that axis. Maybe other planets would have been, but those two things, like, I mean, it's definitely karmic, obviously, since it started happening so early and it continues to happen. Like that's yes. kind of the definition of that karmic backbone that our, ner our, our nerds, our nodes serve as, <laughs> um, our nerds is, is um, <laughs> And that I, I crack myself up too. Um, so, I mean, I feel like it's extra intense. Like Scorpio yeah. North Node all by itself doesn't necessarily have to be this intense. Not to say that it can't be because obviously like here you are and probably it breaks my heart to know that there's probably people whose story is even harsher to tell, you know, yeah. like just when you think it can't get any darker, like life finds a way. So yes. I just, my heart goes out to anybody who experienced like anything in any degree of what you're describing. And another one that I really wanted to ask was like, okay, so Scorpio North Node, Scorpio has two rulers Mars, you already told us, um, the ancient ruler of Scorpio, Mars is in Cancer on your ascendant. So like yes. that tying back into like, you're not getting away from the Scorpio North Node mission of what it is that you're doing here. 
But where is your Pluto? The modern my Pluto ruler of Scorpio is in my fourth house in Libra. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. See, like, and again, like, if your Pluto wasn't in the fourth house, if it, that's the the immediate like being born into it. Yes. You know, like let's say Pluto was in the 10th house for a Scorpio North node, like you would have found these lessons later on when you get to your career versus right. like fourth house, like you're born into it. Like the people yes. who brought you in here, they're going to start the torture and then that's going to carry on in your inner stability. Like that's yes. fourth house Pluto. Like, yes, that's what that means. And that's another one that uh, the fourth house piece anybody's Pluto could be in the fourth house. So that, again, my heart goes out to anybody with that placement. But having it in Libra, like when you say that you had to read him and you had to like adjust and walk on the eggshells and like that reminds me more almost of the shadow side of Libra than it even does about Scorpio. Like the wounded part that came from his outburst, definitely Scorpio, mm. but the jujitsu that you get up yes. like- <laughs> dance around a person that's Pluto Libra and yes. Pluto Libra that's a whole generation of people whose upbringing and parents and initial foundation of relationships was fucked yes all of them yeah. every single person with Pluto and Libra so again like you came at a time where you were just like no I'm gonna do it I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking do this like check it out like oh my god like your ambition it's incredible Capricorn descended. I mean, deep down, you're you're a highly ambitious person. The what's your midheaven? What's your like I see Aries. Oh, see there you yeah, go. Yeah, Aries in in the tenth house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I also have my Venus and my Chiron conjunct in Aries in the tenth house, oh. which are exactly square my Saturn and Mars in Cancer. Of course they are. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> enough yet. You're like no, no. break it on up to eleven. <laughs> We need a little bit more. You're telling me if I wait two more months, I can have this deal. Okay, cool. Like, yeah, yeah. That's and intense, I, intensity. With that Venus conjunct Chiron, it's for the most part, most of my issues with bullying and betrayal have been with women. Mm -hmm. So after, so the teacher being the first female, and then after that, it was all, all women that were bullies. And then in high school, it was horrendous. The, it was like the popular group. I was a new kid because I was from the country. I didn't have any friends and I was trying to find my place. And I thought I had found a place. We were only like friends for like two weeks with this group and they went to a party that my parents wouldn't allow me to go to my parents were like super strict and then because I didn't go to the party we didn't have anything in common anymore so that fell apart and then I was like just kind of like wandering around trying to find somewhere to fit and I had a lot of boys were like interested in me because I was the new girl and I was pretty and they were curious like who who's this pretty new girl and that made things really bad for me because a, there was a popular group and there one specific popular girl decided I was a threat and so she was going to destroy me and so she created all these rumors that I didn't even know what the rumors were until I was in grade 11 but this started in grade 9 she had made rumors that I was a huge druggie that I was a huge party animal and would go to all these parties and pick up like boys or men from these parties. And I was sleeping around and she just made up so much stuff. And I didn't, I didn't know what they were, but I knew that nobody would come near me. It was like, I had leprosy. No boys would date me. Like it was just like, everyone mm. was like staying away from me. So I would sit by myself at my locker and eat my lunch every day. It was mm. just like, it was, it was awful. But anyway, so it was women. It's women repeatedly that I have this with. <laughs> well, I definitely agree. The Venus Chiron piece, like Venus bringing in the feminine, but also that Pluto and Cancer. You haven't mentioned yeah. your mom yet. Like, not, Plu not Pluto and Cancer. Oh, sorry, Saturn Pluto in the fourth house. Pluto in the fourth house is what I meant. And yes, and yes, Saturn and Mars in Cancer. So like both of them, like coming at it from both directions. 
like yeah. inescapable. Um, yeah, you haven't mentioned your mom yet. It's- so my mom is very passive. I think she had to be just to protect herself because my dad was so just aggressive and over the top and narcissistic and things needed to be his way all the time. And so she just took that back seat. She didn't talk much. She didn't say much whenever any of the three of us. So I had a sister and a brother, any of the three of us would start to raise grievance about what my father was doing or be opposed to anything he was saying. She would simply say, this is all she would say, listen to your father. And it was always that, listen to your father. There was never any, she never tried to stand up for us. She never tried to like create any waves. She just stayed in the back. She was neglectful, like emotionally she wasn't there. And I remember often her wandering out into the field. There was this big stone in the middle of one of the fields that was off on one side of her house. And she would sit there by herself, looking off into the distance. It was like, she just, she, she was probably in so much pain and didn't know how to deal with it. And she, as a result, was just absent. She wasn't really there for us as a mother. That listen to your father line, I feel like abdicating her maternal authority to your father. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a more accurate Saturn, Mars and Cancer on the ascendant kind of like (laughs) example of what that's going to be. You know, like the, the mom isn't there. There's only the dad and it's not good. It's all yeah. Capricorn energy where your maternal energy should be, you know? Mm-hmm. And that just, again, like I want to get mad, but I have to respect the soul that chose this life, you know? Uh, yeah. Like, damn, you gave yourself like no, like no escape hatch. Like yeah, there's no escape hatch. <laughs> There's no escape hatch from this. It's like unavoidable. So yeah, just like, wow. Um, And the other thing that I wanted to say, as far as like for you and for any of the Taurus South Nodes watching, one of the pieces of that Taurus South Node is being sheltered. Being isolated is part of the Taurus South Node. Not so much in like you physically need to be kept separate, but your worldview needs to be as small as possible. You need to know as little as possible about what the world really is. And so like that, like you living out on the farm and like you like marrying early, like sheltered to sheltered to sheltered, like like part of the Scorpio North Node is that typically like you're trying to overcome the naivety that comes from being so sheltered and that's where like the bullying and like seeing like I don't know why she would do this like that classic Taurus South Node she's fucked up clearly she's sick (laughs) in her head and that's sad because she's probably in pain too that she doesn't know how to deal with and she's offloading it onto a child yes that's fucked up and it's real that's what 3D is is like when we are full of pain We don't always handle it in super graceful ways. So like you came determined as to see that apparently that like life is a sharp place and you can find peace and stillness and serenity no matter what the rest of them are doing. You know, like that feels like the ultimate mission is to put yourself in the middle of the worst of the worst and to find peace and stillness inside yourself anyway yeah and again like that's a tall order (laughs) that's a really it's a a very tall order and it's funny that you're saying that I realize I still brought forward that isolation piece so I left my marriage 10 years ago and so I had a stroke 12 years ago and I kind of Mm. lost everything I lost my job I lost like I had to rehabilitate my body wasn't functional my speech wasn't functional there was a lot of rehabilitation and then after I got strong enough that two years of rehabilitation I left my marriage because I realized okay everything in my life is making me unhealthy I need to change everything and so what I went back to school I became a massage therapist before that I did accounting so like completely different 
ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And massage therapy is actually something I started out of high school and didn't finish because I got pregnant and it just changed the whole trajectory that I was going in. So I actually went back to where I was, you know, 16 years prior mm-hmm. or previous. Wait, wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I've been practicing massage therapy for nine years. I brought my practice five years ago into my home so I've isolated myself and my business in my home and I very rarely go out of my house except for grocery shopping getting gas going to the bank you know just those really basic things I don't socialize a lot I have kept myself very sheltered again and so what has happened with that Scorpio North node trying to show me that truth like you were saying I was holding group meditation, sound healing journeys. And when I would hold those, I would talk about the astrology. I would talk about the shadow work that humanity's doing. And I would bring in all these very real, but dark elements that I believe that humanity really has to face so that we can really evolve and grow. Mm And I started noticing that there were certain women that would show up to my healing groups that they would sit there kind of, you know, almost like crossed arm and like just looking and not really not liking what I was saying. And I could feel that I was triggering certain people and they just didn't, they wanted love and light. They wanted everything just to be in the ethereal love and light They didn't want to get down into the depths of what is really essential for humanity's healing. And that was the start of a group of women turning against me. And so that was kind of gearing certain key individuals up to create a story against me. And then there was one woman who I started dating a gentleman and I'd only been on my second date and I introduced one of the women who had become one of my friends from this circle. I introduced my date to her and she ended up behind my back trying to seduce him. And when I approached her on it, after it had been going on for a couple of weeks, I knew something wasn't right. And I asked him some questions and then he divulged some information that yeah she had reached out to him and they'd been communicating on Facebook and different things so then when I reached out to her she she just went into this whole denial it was she wouldn't speak to me we still to this date it's been a year and a half she will not speak to me and after that she then gathered the other women that we're already starting to build a, a story against me. She gathered those women and created a little gossip network. And now none of the people that came to my healing events will even associate with me. And it's just, I, so I'm still doing it. I'm like isolating, but within my isolation, I'm still finding ways to get people to like. <laughs> You're not going to get out of learning this. You nope. <laughs> Don't even try. Give yourself to it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I also, okay. So off that story, especially I'm feeling very much like the Pluto and Libra and the Venus Chiron and Aries where people can have whatever opinion of you that they want. That's real. They can be totally freaking delusional thinking yes. that you are something that they have completely fabricated inside their heads. It could be the most hurtful thing you've ever heard and they're entitled to their opinion. Yeah. Period. And they, and they can convince the whole world that I'm that. <laughs> yeah. And that shows you something about those people. Yeah. You know, those are not yes. high quality connections no, in the first not. place. If they're yes. that susceptible being talked into something somebody else's delusion that wasn't a well-grounded connection in the first place right and that's why it's being taken away through this divine gift of this 
this one doing her thing. And dude, like the ones who hate us, they are some of like our most powerful catalysts for oh, finding yes. our own self-love. Yes. You just gotta like, oh, I love you. <laughs> Thank, you <so> much. <laughs> Thank you for blowing that up because that was dysfunctional, you know, yes. like, and that's why it crumbled. Like Pluto and Capricorn finishing up right now. It's like, it will take away every single structure standing in the way of your personal empowerment. Every yes. single one. If it's holding you out of your power, it has to go. Yes. It can't survive no matter how much we want it to or think it should. And really in that is a gift of being shown people's true colors. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. I've been so disappointed in people when I, when I'm, when their true colors are revealed to me, it's just really mind blowing. Yeah. The amount of, of healing humanity needs to do. Yeah. 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 Like there's some dark stuff out there, there that really again, is. like puts your story into perspective as far as like, yeah, it hurt. And I mean, there is like literal torture going on on this planet all day, every day. And the, yeah. the people who survived that they're out there yes, with everyone. And like free, yes. so many of them to do all what they're doing. They're entitled to whatever opinion they have come to, you know, yes. and that's real. Yes. Act accordingly. <laughs> like, yes. Do not let people into your space who have not proven themselves worthy. Do that's not it. give people access to your most valuable resources who you have not already judge them to be showing their true colors you yeah. know like it's a it's a lot about learning who you can trust learning it who really needs is. to get a closed wall and yes. when and how do you choose to open it up and like yes. give somebody access to you because you are the precious and it sounds yes. like a lot of people got access who shouldn't have yeah absolutely and that's one thing that I, st I feel like I still haven't figured that out because i I tend to be so trusting and I don't mm. know why, but I just like want to trust everybody and you wish it was real. <laughs> yes. I wish Where, it was real. Where's, your Neptune? where's your Neptune? My Neptune is in my fifth house as well in Sagittarius. Okay. I just had a whole thing. We were talking about Neptune before we started the recording. So maybe I tell you that after we get off so we don't have to like pull okay. that whole thing in. But interesting. Yeah, Neptune is like super activated in the energy right now as we come off Virgo season and go into Libra season. So I just wanted to know. And just the the concept of of delusion, like where we will hold ourselves in like this has to be real. It has to be real. It has to be real. And you can be confronted with proof after proof, after proof, after proof that that's not real. Yeah. And it's amazing what our beliefs can hold up against. Yes. Like our beliefs are incredibly resilient and delusional sometimes. <laughs> yes. not enough to match. Like your, your view of the world is somewhat distorted, but like, I want to I do want to give like a piece about Neptune and delusion and distortion and like these things that have such negative connotations around them. Everything in the physical serves a purpose. Everything yeah. has a function. It's all just a tool. And like, how are yeah. you using it? Because yeah. you with Neptune and Sag, it's like your distortion on the view of the world. Exactly. You can view it however you want it to be. Like you could build a whole new world in your beliefs and it would manifest around you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's all that's been happening. And that's the unfortunate thing about Pluto in the fourth house being born into your tormentor's grasp is like, you don't know anything different. And so your view of the yeah. world, it's like, yeah, you wanted to break free of an illusion, like nothing that you think about the world, like based on that childhood is real. Yeah. Like it's, there's a lot that you were taught about who you are that is not true. A lot about what you deserve that is not true. And like unlearning those beliefs, like feels like 
the work of your lifetime you yeah. know yeah mm. yeah you wanted him to be so mean to you <laughs> like, damn. like basically a masochist on a soul level like Jeez. yes Jeez. <laughs> yes I feel like yeah. in this last year and a half so I spent a long period of time after I left my marriage not getting into a relationship just so that I could find myself and discover who I am, what makes me happy, what do I want, what do I want, to, what do I want to create? I built my business, I bought a house, and you know, I just kind of rebuilt myself. And so then I finally just said, okay, I'm ready to get into a relationship. Then I meet this man at a breathwork and authentic relating event. And I'm thinking, perfect. He's like like-minded, you know, we have things in common, we both want to do our healing work. I thought, okay, this is, this is perfect. So, (laughs) but it just opened up this whole can of worms Yeah, and we deep dove, we deep dove. Oh my gosh. It was so painful, uncomfortable. And the first thing was my girlfriend trying to seduce him. That was like the beginning of the deep dive into addiction really. And it came down to like, both of us facing his addiction to lust and porn and substances. And it was like this deep dive. And I was faced with the women who are attention seeking addicts Mm -hmm. that need that attention from any man that they can get it from. It's just their choice. Yes. Like they're addicted to the attention. Yeah. Yes. And then the lust addict, the man who's been like so pulled into this program of viewing pornography as the real way to treat a woman and and what sexuality is about. Yeah. Feeding, feeding off of the attention seeker. So the attention seeker and the lust addict just feeding each other. And so we kept hitting up against him being drawn into these attention seekers and me trying to like point out what was happening and him being open to a point, but in denial as well at the same time. And so we, we went through so much work together, but it was really, it was beautiful. It was like a beautiful co-creation of healing, this divine healing that was happening Yeah, yeah. because it was giving me a chance to really identify all of these things that had been happening to me on repeat through every relationship that I'd been in with these women who were trying to always take what I have and him being able to see how this addiction had limited him in ever being able to have a quality relationship with a woman. Mm. And so both of us were doing our individual healing, but also this like collective relational partnership healing. Yeah. And it's been like super uncomfortable and painful and intense and ugly at times. But we now are at a place where I feel like in July, it shifted. And I think it was the shift of the nodes. I think it was when Aries went into um, North, sorry, Node, when and North Node went yeah. Aries and it shifted because with that Taurus Scorpio access, that was the deep dive that was bringing up all the shadows of the attention seeker and the lust addict. Did it line and, up with the timing? Like yep, when it dating totally him? lined up. I started dating him in March of 2021. Okay, so, so that would have been like the first nine months three, or so. Of... Yeah, three months after t- it went to Taurus. No, it went to Taurus um, January 2022. Oh, sorry. i sorry. My years are confused. Yes, it was 22. March yeah, of 22. It was March okay. 22. Cool. Yes. So <laughs> sorry, two sorry. months after. Yeah. Okay. And so for you to yes. get drawn back in, that Scorpio yeah. South Node was like, I'm not done with you. Okay. Get back over here. Come here. <laughs> yep. You're cute and you're doing really good. So let's take it to the next level. <laughs> let's level this shit up. Yes. That's he exactly it. loves you so much. Yes, like giving you does. so much wisdom. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and when the, nif- the nodes shifted since July to present day, he yeah. and I have been in such a beautiful place. Like we've, oh. it's like we overcame all of that darkness and the whole summer has just been so enjoyable together. We've gone to like different functions and we've gone camping a couple times and we've done like all kinds of stuff together. And it's just been really pleasant and enjoyable. So I think I learned some important things yeah. in that Scorpio and Taurus access. Um, I don't like it. 
Well, so I feel like your, that would be your cross nodal return too. Yes. As the yes. Scorpio North node, that means the South node came over your North node. So again, like bringing up and getting out of the way, any emotional blocks that are keeping you from really diving into the depths of what yes. that North node and Scorpio intent. Yeah. Yes. And with the Scorpio being about um, meshing with another, mm -hmm. that has been a challenge because of the experience I've had with men, like my father being verbally and mentally abusive. He used to, he used to call my sister and I, and my mom too. I remember only being like five or six years old and he would call me a slut, a whore, a cunt. Like it was just like, anyway, that's another, but it was that kind of um, enmeshment that I had with somebody was on a very abusive capacity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then even with my, my ex-husband, he didn't call me names like that, but it was, he, he still abused me in like a sexual way. And it was always, he was always telling me over and over and over again. Um, I got married so that I would be able to have regular sex. So if I don't get it from you, I will be getting it from somewhere else. And it was a constant like just keeping me in my place. So I would do what he wanted me to do because we had small children. I had a full-time job. I was like looking after the household and I would be exhausted by the time it was, you know, time to go to bed. And of course, then he figured that was his time. And often I would be like, I can't, I'm so tired. And so it, then the threats would happen. And so that ability to mesh with somebody was very toxic. So I feel like the relationship that I'm in now, he and I have been able to communicate openly about all of the dark shadow stuff. He's been able to listen to me. He's been able to own his stuff. I've been able to listen to him. I've been able to own my stuff. And we've worked in like a very kind way with each other. It hasn't been abusive at all. There's never been any yelling. There's never been any name calling. It's always been kind. And I feel like that's what the North Node in Scorpio has also been trying to guide me to that healthy enmeshment with another. So I think that I'm learning that too with this partnership of how to actually combine with another in a healthy way. Yeah. Well, and I could totally see where like the Taurus North Node chapter for the collective was a lot about pulling back from relationship and like focusing into yourself. But this group where it's your cross nodal return and your whole thing is about get in a relationship. Like you guys, <laughs> most of all, like I wouldn't be surprised at all if a lot of Scorpio North Nodes attracted a relationship that let them play out some of these yeah. patterns that, I mean, it wasn't new, but it got to be handled in a new way. Yes. And probably, especially for Scorpio North nodes, like it really hurt. It yeah. was intense and I didn't like it at all. And I would never have chosen it if I had known that that's what that was. Yes. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Like, <laughs> but I didn't know. And I felt my body was like, Hey, look at this. Like, you know, just, you should go this way. And the Taurus North node was all about like, listen to your body, let it guide yeah. you. And yeah. I am not surprised at all that for you, it guided you back towards relationship after the hiatus of like not going there. Yes. Yeah. Super yeah. cool. Mm. Super cool. Super. <laughs> oh, gosh. So Let's I feel like there's more on that Taurus South node end of like, especially where you have Venus Chiron together and Taurus is ruled by Venus. So like, I would ask anybody with the Taurus South node, like, where's your Venus? What's your Venus doing? That's going to paint a little bit more of like the karma and the intention behind coming with that Taurus South node. Um, the Venus Chiron, does that mean that that's in like the ninth house? That's the 10th house. In the 10th house. 10th house. 
And I kind of see that like with my first teacher, mm-hmm. authority, 10th house would be authority figure. Mm. And that was feminine that yeah. became my oppressor and my bully. Yeah. My, my Mercury is also in Taurus in the 11th house. I don't know if that brings any other Mercury. elements into it. So I have a lot in Taurus. Yeah. My, my Jupiter, my sun, my moon, my Mercury. And there's some asteroids that I don't have in this tor- chart. I think Pallas, Athena, and Vesta are in my 11th house in Taurus as well. Can't remember for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So I got a lot there. So I think like, so Mercury being in my ability to communicate, but also to absorb information and process the information with my south node being there in Taurus, I think plays in. Like I feel like, so what I, what is happening for me right now is I'm doing like a writing project that may become a book. Like I feel like I, I want it to become a book. I also want to create a course too. And it's all about human shadow. And so I've been doing, as I've been going through all of the, the lust addiction and the attention addiction, I've been writing all this stuff down and I've been collecting my thoughts about all of this stuff. And I feel like my Mercury, it's not conjunct, it's, it's far away. So my Mercury is at 29 degrees of Taurus and my South Node is at 12 degrees. So it's a distance away, but I feel like I'm supposed to speak on this stuff. I'm supposed to bring this forward. And I feel like right now I'm I'm now starting to understand what this whole, the whole thing has been about. My whole life has been about me bringing forward the shadow aspects of humanity that we all need to become aware of so that we can heal them. Because if we don't, if we just keep hiding them under the rug, nothing's ever going to change. So it's about collecting all of these pieces putting it together and presenting it in a way that can help others. Mm -hmm. I feel like that South node with the moon and the sun, all of my like physical and my emotional, and then the mercury element coming in there about how I can communicate this and bring this forward really have been driving me. I don't know if that made sense. (laughs) It did. It absolutely did. And I would totally agree with your interpretation as far as like bringing this forward, speaking on these things. Like, again, the the Aries North Node crossing over your Aries Midheaven at some point is like a turning point in your career, the North Node on yeah. your Midheaven. So, and I'm I mean, feeling that yeah. intense. So, I've been doing massage therapy for nine years. It was nine years in July. Um, and I've been incorporating as time has gone on. I got my yoga teacher license. I got um, my sound healing, um, Reiki, uh, somatic breath work. So I've like added on a bunch of different modalities to the massage because I wanted to create this holistic hub that people could come to and access physical, emotional, and energetic healing. But I've been really feeling that there's something different that's supposed to be coming in, that I'm supposed to be doing something different than what I'm doing. And I don't really know what that is yet, but it's been a really strong feeling. (laughs) Oh, I love it. (laughs) I'm excited to see what what that's going to grow into and what, if anything, like as this conversation settles, that helps to illuminate because you know, just some thoughts on the fifth house side of your North Node, like there's like an individual intention that like this work that you're creating, while I would agree, like it's definitely for everyone else too, mostly because of all the other personal planets that you have in the 11th house, but like, it's really not for them so much as it is for you. It's about you, like finding your own joy, your own confidence, right? The yes. fifth house is also that side of like royalty, 
holding yourself in that much power. Right. To say, I am the authority figure, the ultimate authority of my life. Yes. I will pass judgment on any of you fools bringing clown nonsense into my space. You will be asked to leave. You know, like it's the awesome boundaries like you're talking about. Um, So like it's for you more than anything else. It's like for your joy. And when you put Scorpio in there too, it's like it almost feels like you living a joyful relationship is all you have to do. And all of this stuff is going to squeeze out the edges and your Taurus brilliance is going to, you know, build something out of that. No doubt about it. But it's like that what you're going to build just isn't the point. Like the joyful relationship that you're building is the point. And even more yeah. than that, you gaining your power in full as a result yes. of this joyful relationship is the point. That resonates so strongly with me. I've been feeling that too. Like what I've been building with this gentleman has like at times just feels like that's the only thing. Like I've yeah. been feeling what you're just saying. It's like, that's what I've been feeling. And that's this. the main like, work. Yeah. 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 And like from there, you know, going on, on even this podcast, like this video. And like, I I was going to say on stage, like the fifth house North node wants you to be at center stage and be seen, but it's like, what are they going to see once you get in center stage? And for the Scorpio fifth house North node, it feels like all your depth of experience and knowledge and wisdom that's come from your relationship it's like that wisdom is all you need with you in center stage. Like there really is nothing else to build or do. It's just like, if you're loving your relationship, that's a really good sign. And, and, you know, like keep us posted because there's some ridiculous Libra energy going on where we're, you know, in Libra season and your Pluto's in Libra and as all of this stuff is like moving through Libra towards Scorpio, it's going to square Pluto at the end of Capricorn. Every personal planet coming through the end of Libra is going to get that jolt from Pluto, which is going to reveal some dark shit. And along with it, your ability to handle dark shit. So some trials and tribulations probably. And that can go one of two very different ways. It can break your relationship apart and teach you some valuable lessons in the process, or it can burn down the old relationship and a new one can be born from the ashes that's even stronger and more empowering to both of you in the process of yes. this dark stuff. Like, I yes. mean, what you're describing is like, you know, the bad stuff made us stronger. I, if that's what you got going on, I got no reason to think that like all these Pluto squares coming up in the next like month, like that's going to like really yeah. go crazy. Yeah. Like, exponential I is the so word too. that's coming to me. Like you yes. haven't seen anything yet in terms yes. of how empowering this relationship has been so far. That's just a taste compared yeah. to if you can hang on to it, like it'll take you on a ride and I don't know where that's coming from. You do you. (laughs) Like, it's like, whoa. Also something I was going to share was um, Saturn and Mars, both being in cancer and on your ascendant, it makes a lot of sense to me that a masculine that you would be able to build a relationship with must have significant emotional intelligence. The ability to listen, the ability to hold, the ability to, take ownership of their own emotions and give you ownership of yours. Like all of that cancer energy, like you need to be a master. And so does he, the fact that it's Mars and Saturn, like those masculine archetypes in cancer, like regular guys, they ain't going to get it, you know, like regular, like what even is that? But you know what I mean? (laughs) I know what you mean. And yeah, that, and you, as you said that, I just, I pictured his chart. He's got, in his seventh house, his seventh house is in Pisces and his Jupiter and his Mercury are in there. So that's yeah, the emotional. Yeah. Journey. And the seventh house Pisces, like relationships. And he's yes. got a soft, watery heart when it comes. Yes. To <laughs> um, <laughs> which I can also say that Pisces shadow, like you want to merge with the all. 
Like it's not even that Scorpio energy of like, I want to merge with the one. I want to merge with the all. So like, there's a lot of poly behavior. There's a lot of like yeah, yeah. stepping outside the boundaries with like, what's yes. allowed. It's like, I want it all, you know, like, <laughs> yes. yeah. So, I mean, I can definitely see where the lust addiction or like whatever you want to call it. It's like just an expansive appetite. Yeah. Did you say Jupiter was there too? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. so, like, yeah. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Aubrey Marcus, but he, yes, I am. He has Mars in Pisces, I think Midheaven in Pisces, some other stuff in Pisces. And he, he triggers me very vocal about <laughs> the poly community in his time he spent yes. there. And he's now been married and with his partner, I think for maybe like six years, and they've been married for three or something like that. Um, yeah. I'm not surprised that he triggers you greatly. But I'm gonna say, <laughs> that's that's the Pisces shadow is like, yes. I want it all. And yes. my Mars is also in Pisces and my North Node is in Pisces. And these are part of the clarifications that are coming through to me is that I want it all. I want to redefine like, what is relationship? What does that mean to me? I want to personally pen my own definition. And yes. it's got a lot of freedom and space for me. That's what I need. So, yes. yeah, I don't know how that fits into the conversation at all, but <laughs> it needed to be said. That's, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense that your person, ha like, has that kind of coming together with, like, also just a little bit of medicine, if anybody resonates as being one of the attention seekers, because I definitely have had experiences where I would put myself in that category. And honestly, Absolutely, like, me too. You need love. Yes. You need love. And a Pisces it. is very generous in love. It's very yeah. like, yeah. Oh, you need love. I have love. Here, let me. Give you love. <laughs> so again, like the shadows are dancing together. It's like the perfect storm for for some things to go down. But yeah, I mean, the your open mindedness to like point out what's happening, your willingness to say it feels like. Yeah. I mean, your willingness to be like, this is not working for me. This is what mm -hmm. I see. This is what I'm experiencing. And I, I don't want this, you know, yeah. and it sounds like he's growing like right along with you. So that seems really encouraging. The work that, he, the work that he's done is amazing. I'm so impressed. Yeah. I'm so impressed with him. Oh. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're all just doing the best we can out here, yeah. you know, trying to figure it out. <laughs> so, yes. So fun. Yes. Any, <laughs> anything else that you want to, people who've watched it all the way through, they're still with us. Probably a lot of them are Scorpio North nodes. Maybe some of them love Scorpio North node. Like, what do you want to leave them with? So I think, um, for my experience, the way I see this access is a very challenging access. And what I would say is the greatest lesson that I've been learning more recently, just within this year and a half, is really that the core of this lesson is about finding our authenticity, our truth that brings us joy and safety and security and autonomy and being able to stand strong in that and not waver and not people please. That was a big part of my experience through life is I've always been a people pleaser and I try to be extra nice to everybody and the people that are the meanest to me, I would be the nicest to, and then they'd be even meaner to me. So the lesson is stop people pleasing, be true to yourself, set those healthy boundaries, use your discernment and, and really see people first before you open your heart fully and just take them right in. Just use your discernment. Use all of your senses, your sight, your heart, your gut, everything, and really protect yourself first. And then when people show you who they really are, 
then you can give and then you can do the things that would make them feel welcomed and happy and stuff but don't do it at the detriment of yourself well said well said I feel like that's basically a summary of what you're wanting <laughs> with your Scorpio North Node. So that's <laughs> yes. perfect. That's a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much, Maria, for Thank joining. Thank you so much. I your really enjoy it. Your willingness to share. Super cool. Your willingness to choose this life that you're living. Super cool. Yes. I feel like I can't reflect that enough because damn, but. Yes, thank you so much for giving us this space, giving us this glimpse into another another soul's experience on this crazy earth school. Um, for any of you who have been watching, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. I'm sure Maria would like to read them as well, um, especially for those who also are on this path of the Scorpio North Node. Like, What stood out to you as far as did anything click? Did anything stick out as yeah I do have a different experience than that you know like any any of that is definitely clarifying and that's why I'm doing this convert these conversations so if anybody would like to be in on a conversation like this one like you'd like to sit in Maria's spot and tell us your stories I would love that as well so you could reach out to me my email address is in the description send me an email we'll we'll see if we can set that up so thank you again everyone for joining me this is one of my happy places is getting to do these and until next time you take such good care of yourselves and so will I cool <laughs>